Hi, I'm Alan Bagnall. I'm an interventional cardiologist. Today we're going to be using the uh, Symbionics Angiomenta to uh, perform a catheterization of the right coronary artery and of the left coronary artery. We're going to start today by uh, showing you a demonstration of catheterization of the left coronary artery. We've secured femoral access and we're going to choose a guide wire and a guide catheter that we can navigate through the arterial tree with to the uh, ascending aorta. And so to start with, we're going to select a guide wire. We're going to use an 035 J-tipped guide wire. The curve on the end of that wire is going to help our uh, wire not go into any branches and allow us to steer away from any branches should we encounter that difficulty. The guide catheter that we're going to select is a Judkins uh, left four. This has a four centimeter curve, which when coming from the femoral artery is the typical uh, size curve required to selectively engage the left main in the majority of patients. More elderly patients, those with hypertension, larger patients may need a slightly larger guide catheter, and conversely, those with a smaller aortic root may need a Judkins left 3.5. So we're going to start with our guide wire, and it's inserted in through the femoral sheath. And I'm going to be screening on fluoro as we go. So the first thing that we'll see is the appearance of this J-tip guide wire in the abdominal aorta. And there we go, crossing uh, up into the thoracic aorta, and we can see our J-tip. I'm just going to select my guide catheter now and thread this over the wire. And we're going to be fixing our position of the wire and bringing this guide catheter up a little bit closer to the tip. We've made sure that if we've navigated the coronary tree that we've not met any resistance on the way. And if we were to have encountered that, then taking an angiogram would show us a roadmap of where we need to go. So we can see the tip of the guide catheter, this radio-opaque marker there, just below the tip of the guide wire. I'm now going to advance the guide wire around the arch of the aorta. Now, sometimes when we try to do this, we find that the wire will head up into the left subclavian artery, and we may need to use either the wire tip to redirect ourselves back around the aortic arch, or to use some manipulation of the guide catheter itself to help us achieve that. So we're coming up towards the aortic arch, and there you can see it buckling up and heading up into the subclavian. So what I'm going to do is just bring the guide catheter a little bit closer to the tip. And I've put some direction towards the left-hand side of the screen there. And hopefully that'll just take us round the arch. And you can see me advancing the wire now. And I'll feel some resistance just as it comes down there onto the aortic valve. So now I'm fixing the wire with my left hand, uh, with my right hand, sorry. And with my left hand, I'm advancing the guide catheter. The wire has sufficient support to act like a rail and allow delivery of the guide catheter. I'm keeping my eye on the tip of the guide wire to ensure that it doesn't move anywhere that I don't want it to go, and specifically not down into one of the coronary arteries. Now that my guide catheter is in position, the next stage is to gently withdraw the wire, and that will allow the guide catheter to, fill, um, to uh, assume its proper shape. Now, in this case, we're just going to take this all the way out. And in a real case, we would be connecting up our uh, manifold at this point to enable us to inject some contrast. From here, it's a simple case of talking the guide catheter into the left main ostium. There are only uh, two simple movements that you can make with the guide catheter. And these are moving it in and out with the left hand, or talking it clockwise or counterclockwise with the right hand. Combination of those movements is usually sufficient to take the guide catheter into the left main ostium. If the guide catheter doesn't appear to go in straight away, you may wish to just uh, take a small cine. But there we saw the catheter jump across to the right-hand side of the screen, and that's in the left main ostium now. Now, before taking any further injections of contrast, I want to ensure that my catheter is not up against the wall of the artery because injecting at that time may cause dissection of the artery. I look at the pressure tracing that's coming from the tip of the catheter, and if that is not damped, 
that I'm usually okay to go ahead and inject. I aspirate on my uh, manifold to make sure that there are no bubbles in the system, and then we take an angiogram. I'm going to move the table into a uh, PA caudal view to start with. And this is usually quite a good view for outlining the left main stem and the circumflex artery. We take our cine run now. Check again that the pressure is not damped before injection. And there's our coronary artery. And that's catheterization of the left coronary artery. We're now going to move on to catheterization of the right coronary artery. I've left my wire in position in the aortic route, and I've selected a Judkins right 4 diagnostic catheter, which I'm going to advance up from the femoral artery into the aortic route. So keeping my wire still and fixed with my uh, right hand, I'm advancing the catheter with my left hand. Just prolapsing back there a bit, just advance it down a bit further into the root. And the catheter comes around the aortic arch and down. Oops, wanting to prolapse there. I'm just going to rescue that. So the wire here wasn't acting like a strong rail in it prolapse there up into the right uh, subclavian. I'm just taking it back around into the root of the aorta. And we'll just take the guide catheter around again. And this time with just a slightly different uh, orientation of the catheter, it was able to make it round. Now, for engaging the right coronary artery, you commonly have to uh, put a little bit more torque on the catheter. I'm just extracting my wire here beforehand. This is where we would connect up the manifold, double checking that we've not got any air in the system as we do so. The right coronary artery comes off anteriorly, so moving into a, a left anterior oblique um, view allows us to outline uh, the ostium of the right coronary artery. And I'm expecting it uh, to come off just to the left of the screen as we look at it. Now I just gently withdraw and rotate my catheter. You can see it turning, just beginning to turn there towards the ostium. I'm looking for the characteristic jump as it moves into the right coronary artery ostium. That looked like it jumped across there. Before we do anything, we check our pressure, and I can see that the pressure is actually damped in this bit. Now, the conus branch is an early branch of the right coronary artery, and sometimes the catheter tip can enter that branch, and it's generally not a good idea to inject if it's in the conus. So I'm just going to take some of that torque off. You can see our pressure tracing change there again. We'll just try to re-engage in a slightly different orientation. We're going to see where we are now. Just by the side of the right. Just need a little bit of manipulation just to take that in. And you can see it jump right across there. And this time when we look at the pressure tracing, it's a much uh, normal, non-damped tracing. Get ready to take a cine now. One last check to make sure my pressure is okay. And we take the cine run. And that's catheterization of the right coronary artery.